Thanks for joining me today. In this video, we will cover the Forcepoint DLP database fingerprinting capabilities. We will show how to set up a database fingerprinting task, how to create a rule using the database fingerprint, and then test the database fingerprinting rule on a client. Please hit that like and subscribe button to show your support for these videos. Feel free to leave a comment to let us know of other topics that you would like covered. Enjoy! The Forcepoint DLP solution includes two fingerprinting options. The first is the file fingerprinting, which we discussed in the previous video, and the second is the database fingerprinting, which we will discuss in this video. The database fingerprinting allows for an organization to protect any sensitive information within an existing database. The database types include SQL, Oracle, Salesforce.com, and .csvs. The database fingerprinting can be used to protect the entire database or specific fields within a database. Like the file fingerprinting, the database fingerprinting process does not save or backup the data, but instead saves partial hashes that are used to detect the fingerprinted data that is leaving the environment. The database fingerprinting requires a task to be configured that will inform the crawler service of which database to scan, what credentials to use, and what fields to scan inside of the database. In this video, we will use the database fingerprinting to protect data contained within a CSV file. The configuration for any other type of database fingerprinting task is similar to this process. Navigate to Main, Policy Management, Content Classifier, Database Fingerprinting. This page is the Database Fingerprinting Status page, where you can see the status of existing database fingerprinting tasks or create a new one. To create a new database fingerprinting task, select the New button in the top left, then select the CSV file fingerprinting. On the first page, input the name and description for this task. Then click Next. On the Data Source page, input the credentials the task will use to access this database. In the CSV file name field, input the UNC path of the server or shared folder where the CSV file is stored. Then click Browse and select the correct file from the list. Then click Next. On the field selection page, you will see a list of the fields that were retrieved from the CSV file that was selected. This allows for granular selection of the sensitive data. Select the fields that are sensitive and click Next. The scheduler page is where you will select when you want the task to run. If the database is being constantly updated, then daily might be the best option here. Then click Next. The fingerprinting type page is where you can determine whether or not the database should be completely rescanned each time the task runs, or you can configure the task to look at whether or not the specific fields have been modified and use that to determine if a full scan should be performed. When using the differential scan, there is an option to perform a full scan after a certain number of scans have been performed. Select the appropriate option for you here, then click Next. The export page can be used to back up the file fingerprint classifiers or to migrate them to another Forcepoint DLP server. Click Next. Finally, the finished page is a summary of the configurations that were just made for the database fingerprinting task. Once the configuration is finished, there will be a prompt that a policy needs to be configured that uses this classifier that was just created. Navigate to Main, Policy Management, DLP Policies, Manage Policies. Then click the Add button in the top left and select Custom Policy. On the General page, input the name and description of this new policy, then click Next. The Conditions page is used to define what sensitive information this rule is looking for. Select the Add button dropdown and select the Fingerprinting option. In the pop-up window, select the Content Classifier that has the same name as the database fingerprint that we just configured. Once you select this, you will see an option to select which fields from the fingerprinted database to use as the condition. Select all of the fields that you will want to use in this rule, then click OK. Depending on what you want this policy to do, you can repeat these steps and then customize the logic and change how this policy triggers. Once there is more than one condition, a logic section appears that allows you to use and or not modifiers to change how the rule triggers. Once you are satisfied with these conditions, click Next. The Severity and Action page tells the rule what to do when it is triggered. Select one of the action plans that already exist or create a new one, then click Next. The Source page determines who this rule applies to. By default, the option is set to everyone. 
you can configure this to include or exclude specific users or groups. We will leave it to all and click next. The last configuration for this rule is the destinations page, which determines which channels the rule will be active on. The testing that will be done in this video will focus strictly on the endpoint channels. We will enable each of these and select the cloud applications group under the endpoint application. Then click next. Finally, we will see the summary of the rule that we just created. Click finish. Click the deploy button in the top right to push these updates. Before we test on the client, let's go back to the database fingerprinting task and make sure that it has run and completed. Navigate back to main, policy management, content classifiers, database fingerprinting. If the task still shows pending, then click the start button at the top, then refresh the page a couple of times until it shows completed. This might take a while depending on how big the database is that is being scanned. Once the database fingerprinting task has been completed, let's go test on the client. Here on the client, we can see that we have a copy of the fingerprinted CSV file on the desktop. The first test we will do is to try and email out the file. We can see that the endpoint blocked it. But what about if we take a portion of the contents and try to email that out? It's also blocked. What if we try to upload the contents to a website like dlptest.com? It's blocked as well. What if we tried to upload the entire file? We can see that it is blocked as well. Okay, well what if we decided that we wanted to print this document? We can see here that the endpoint blocked it. Let's say that we try to use the Dropbox application to exfiltrate this data to our personal Dropbox account. Here we can see that the endpoint blocked it as well. Okay, but what about if I try to move this data over to a removable USB? We can see that this is blocked as well. Okay, well what if I just try to move it to another server in the network that doesn't have the endpoint on it? Here we can see that this type of transaction being a LAN transaction is also blocked. Before we wrap this video, let's take a moment to review the logs from the tests. As we can see here, we are able to get all of the relevant details about these transactions. This includes the time, date, username, source, destination, channel, and even forensics details here at the bottom including the actual file that was uploaded during the test. Thanks for watching this video where we used ForcePoint's DLP solution to configure a database fingerprinting task, create a custom DLP rule using the database fingerprint, and then test exfiltrating that fingerprinted data. As always, please hit the like button and subscribe to show your support for these videos. Feel free to leave a comment to let us know of other topics that you would like covered. See you next time.